graphical table graphical table is not considered as a tabular visualization or a graphical visualization it is a gray area between both of them table is used as a container it is similar to cross table itself basically to split the values on rows okay but the value what we are showcasing it will be a specific visualization which need to be repeated across the those values so graphical table is also a summarizing visualization to provide a lot of information at a glance you can show the columns with dynamic items spot lines calculated values conditional icons or bullet graphs these are also called miniature visualizations because they are not full fledged visualization but are able to communicate the key details in form of small charts or small visualizations over there to convey the message and you can basically iterate these visualizations across the leaf nodes selected on the row axis there will be one value for each row on row axis and each dynamic item column has own axis expression filtered and limited by marking separately see this in action okay example graphical table is this let's say i wanted to see the trend of average profit over the months overall average profit and basically a normal spark line and a bullet graph whether this particular value have been achieved or not we want to do it for all the categories and sub categories custom means the segment segment and the sub category okay and uh, just let me use this particular one segment category and sub category okay for specific categories we want to see these uh, line charts separately but if we have we are going there to the level of creating visualizations for each one of them it will be too much time consuming and repetitive activity rather than creating one visualization for all we can have those categories available on an axis and plot the charts for that okay this is the idea behind uh, this graphical table let's create it to see how exactly it works we are going to introduce a simple graphical table in case you are not able to directly see let's say graphical table is here but you are not able to find it directly type the name of that particular visualization and it will uh, trim down here similar to cross table select the aggregation level here let's say category and uh, then subcategory okay the values are plotted here now i want to see the trend of sales i go to the properties i use a let's say add a miniature visualization in access the rows will be represented here and we need to use columns as specific values let's say a line chart for sales trend so we do not have a line chart natively available but spark line is similar to the line chart itself with only one x axis and y axis available we want to see the trend over uh, order date and sum of sales itself that will be available here and what controls we get in data we are going to use the same parent data table but markings we can use separate for the ones okay separately for this one limit by marking uh, separately and use different filtering for different items over here okay let's go to the formatting part you can uh, simply format it individually okay use thousand separator short number format here in access part we can choose one scale or multiple scales for each of them to clearly show the values and in appearance we can show the end starting point end point okay y axis value width 
like how much space that should be allowed for this ones. Okay. Spark lines, let's expand it. Okay. And then line colors and line width, those things we can customize it here. Okay. So let's use 30. And basically that's all we can, we need to perform. It will basically show the, a small trend of the values over the time repeating across the categories. And here you get flexibility to change the height of different columns for clear representation and width of the columns as well. So this is the main agenda behind the uh, using graphical tape. Here, one thing to notice is graphical tables can perform cert certain actions. You need to configure it. You can opt to uh, perform some actions on click. For example, if I want to open up the filters panel on click, okay? So simply I will do view, filters, add and show, okay? Clicking okay, close. And this filters panel is by default disabled. Whenever I click on that, filters panel will open up. So basically we can attach a specific access using, uh, using a dynamic visual as an accent control, okay? It helps to perform certain activities. In which scenario they are useful? For example, I have used one uh, visualization to show the details of this particular selection. When I click, it is going to mark something. Okay, so let's say I create a details visualization as a mm, simple table itself, which shows right now this table, it is uh, showing the values filtered by this particular visualization. Okay. And uh, how many are they? Let's, let this, let's convert it to a cross table itself. When you mark different items, the row count will change. And that particular detail is placed on some other screen itself. Let's say on details visualization page, okay? So expectation here is when you click on this particular one, along with marking this particular data, it should be navigating through to the page where that uh, details are placed. You go to access, selected, sorry, an access, specific access, and in settings, you just ask to navigate to a specific page, details visualization, okay? And now, whenever you will click on something, along with marking the data, it will route you to the particular place where exactly they are placed. Come to the next thing here. Apart from a spark line, there are three more type of miniature visualization, calculated value, icon, and bullet graph. Calculated value and icon are simple in their meaning. Basically, they will be calculated value is simply perform an aggregation on top of the data, like any other expression you use. And that particular aggregation can be uh, shown as a single number. That's a calculated value. There is nothing much to and uh, to uh, explain here, we simply go and select a value. For example, I wanted to show sum of profit or average profit for that particular category. Okay. And I go to the formatting, select it as a currency, decimals one, thousand sort number format, thousand separator. And that's all I need. Okay. We are able to create that particular one here. So 43 as an average, so average profit. If you want to use a heading over there, you can go to settings and change the name as average profit. Okay. That's all here. And similarly with the icons, we can 
use the similar calculations that we did recently, like uh, sum of profit. Okay. And we want to use put an icon based on a condition. Right? So come to this means basically icons take the liberty to show a single representative icon for different rules set over there. For example, if we are showing a calculated value and we select to show top two values over there for as an icon. So it will calculate the value. It will not directly showcase the uh, number itself, but it will compare the number among the categories among the, uh, the different categories available on the screen and show the top two categories as uh, icon represented in front of them. Okay. For uh, representation purpose, I have similar kind of setup here, like icon place for top five categories here uh, in the different shipping modes, means order priority and shipping mode. As an icon, so that these particular ones are having the highest uh, number of sales or some uh, number of uh, profit profit associated with that. That's a key benefit with the icon. Okay. Press uh, graphical table. Start with uh, the similar kind of structure means uh, category and subcategory. Okay. And here rather than a spark line, I'm going to use the icon itself. Okay. In access to remove, add an calculated value just to show what exactly I'm trying to achieve here. Sum of profit, okay. Formatting as a currency, decimal points to thousand separator, short number format, okay. And uh, then I'm going to add a icon, okay. Icon is set to top 1%. Okay, and I'm going to change that uh, aggregation criteria to the similar one, profit and sum of profit. You can see there will be a small icon in front of that particular value, which matches the condition, the rule, what we have specified here, and the aggregation provided on top. If we simply change this particular rule to rather than showing for top one, just so the bottom one, okay, color in red and icon should be stop sign or something cross sign over there. So it will show the bottom five values over there. Similarly, we have multiple rules there to represent the data as icons matching to the conditions. Okay, so greater than average. Let's say I'm selecting whatever the value is greater than average, that should be represented in green and a check sign. Okay. And that will be simply represented. So graphical table have these three simple uh, approaches for uh, showcasing the data, spark line, calculated value and uh, icon. This fourth category, which is called bullet graph. Bullet graph is a type of visualization which looks like a bar chart which have two components one component is called calculated value and comparative value so let's say calculated value is sum of sales okay sum of sales means how much sales we did uh, for that particular subcategory and we have a target of sales in every single category for example i want to have 1 million dollars worth of sale for every single subcategory. I will put like that a target value over here. Two thousand, one thousand, one million. Okay. Like this, basically. So what it will do, it will put a target line vertical to uh, every single place and the, comp uh, the actual values will be try to reach out to that particular one. It will show that whether our profits are or our sales are reaching to that particular target value or not. This is a representation of whether a uh, value is reaching to the set target or not. As it is a calculation, we can have dynamic values as well. 
What other features this particular uh, kind of visualization has is called color ranges. You can show the color range of a specific color. Let's say, right, by default, I'm using the uh, black color, okay, here to show the whole range itself. If you want to add a different ranges like good, average, bad kind of thing, let's say if it is below zero, okay, then it should be considered as a bad value, okay? And that should be represented in red. Okay, basically this one should be black and here it should be red. If something below zero, it should be red. Okay. Then we add one more, like uh, 100. And assign some kind of range to that. And then we add another value. Let's say... Ten thousand, uh, one million itself, and give a color to that green. Means the target have it already met. Okay, basically there is no. It is created on top of seal, so the, so zero value is not being represented clearly. I am going to show as profit, so that it will be clearly visible. Okay. So basically, we have a target of, let's say, uh, $10,000 profit, worth of profit, okay? And we can check the values. Let's say I'm using the black colored bar to represent the values. How much out of that particular target have been achieved? That particular color as a purple, okay? Whether this particular value have been achieved or not, Color ranges are like if the values are means this part uh, values are lesser than the set in a uh, threshold like zero, it will be shown in red. If they are between 100 and uh, the zero, it will be shown as a black. If there is between 100 and 10,000, it will be represented as um, let's say, reduce it. It will be represented as yellow and beyond 10,000, it will be represented in a green. Okay, the color ranges signify like which range is specifically the particular achieved value have reached so far. Okay, this is the basic concept behind a bullet graph. Bullet graph will have a comparator and a value means which will be which will be compared, and then there will be color ranges like till what extent the target have been achieved, okay? And as similar to any other miniature visualization, it can also trigger the actions over there. Clear on this? How to use a simple graphical table? So I have already covered the concept of action controls. So what exactly action controls by definition? The action controls are the controls which can trigger some kind of action. So whatever we perform in spot fire, that's a kind of action like uh, marking something, filtering something, or resetting the marking, resetting the filters, going to a specific page, or apply a specific bookmark. Every single thing is an action. Even the scripts and the data functions are action. So action control will be something which triggers those kind of action on a click or on some something activity. So basically it says, specifically says perform action on click. You can perform actions in multiple ways, but you action controls basically give you approach to trigger them, okay? Action controls can trigger spot fire functions, apply bookmarks, can navigate to a certain page or visualization in the analysis. They, you can trigger multiple actions in one click, you can export a prepared report or add your own custom actions with the help of Iron Python, or you can refresh a data function calculation with the action control itself. They are very simple concept. They are simply 
an approach to trigger and accelerate there. So how to create that? I've already shown. You simply go to the properties, then the specific access property or a specific uh, calculated uh, uh, spark line or bullet graph or the calculated value or the icon settings. They are reached till the actions tab. Check the perform action on click and then perform uh, uh, click on the settings to define your actions there to uh, to be triggered. Okay, they are useful in the scenario when you have to combine your activities with certain kind of results as actions. Okay, and they have all different use cases over there. One of them was like, okay, I have a detailed visualization on some separate page than the current one. So we can navigate the people after marking. So that's a type of implementation, one type of implementation uh, and use case over there. Okay. Now, tabular visualizations are um, at end. By, we have four tabular visualizations by, uh, by uh, design. Like we have raw data, then we will use a simple table plot. If we have a kind of uh, a summary visualization you want to uh, represent, we will sum use summary table, but to say it's rarely used. For aggregate, for giving complete summary, we use the cross table, which is a representation of pivot, okay? And then if you want to show the graphical information repeating over the different uh, category rows, then we will use graphical table. Graphical table can be used for showcasing a lot of data at one place, okay? Now, coming to the next concept, the trend. There are a lot of bookish definition, but the simple words, Trend is something, a pattern, something which changes over the time. Trend is a pattern found in a time series data set. Means a data set which utilizes time as a variable there and something changing according to the time, over the period of the time. Okay, that's called trend. Trend is used to describe data movement upward or downward direction. That's as simple. Uh, that is as simple as that. We can have lot of book bookish definitions, but in the end, they come to one single point. That is, it has an involvement of a time axis there, and another value will be changing over that particular period of time. Okay, that's the trend. To represent trend in Sportfire, we use line chart. Line chart are the representation of data patterns over the time. In ideal world, we observe the movement of a value, basically the point value over the time. That's a trend. Okay. Other thing that is called volume. Volume is means the simply a quantity. Volume is the amount of an asset of security. This also can change over the time. Basically, volume is a calculation that shows number of volumes directly associated with the data set. For example, if you try to visualize the production of wheat or rice over the period of time, the wheat or rice in quintals is a volume. Volume means basically the amount. Okay, to represent any kind of volume, we use bar charts. So bars and lines are the basic kind of visualizations which are represents, which are suitable for representing the volumetric comparisons and the trend over the time, respectively. For any trends involved, the suitable visualizations are uh, line chart, and for any change, uh, any volume compare, compared there, we use bar charts. In case we are using the trend of volumes itself, we have a freedom to use a bar chart as well for showing the trends. These are the key takeaways for volumetric comparisons and the line chart. Oh, sorry, the trends. So we use 
Okay, it seems that the content for line chart is somehow deleted. Anyway, I will show this particular thing practically. Okay. Line charts basically have different utilities. Okay. It shows the trend over time, means how a particular variable is changing over the time. That's one utility of line chart. Here, we take a time axis on x axis and a value on y axis. And we observe the changes over the time. That's called the trend over the time. Also, if there are too many categories, if we want to compare those categories from each other, okay, how they are, which one is higher, which one is lower, we can put those categorical values on y x uh, on x axis and the values associated with those categories on y axis it will show the difference of the labels condition is when they are suitable when there are more number of categories on x axis are used like these and we have to facilitate a comparison because bar chart will become very clumsy in this particular situation when there are a lot of values involved Okay. Third thing, you ideally for comparison of categories, we use bar, bar chart itself because the volumetric comparison is facilitated by them. But if the number of categories is too high, the line chart can be used. Okay. Third thing, what a line chart facilitates is comparison over time. You can have more than one categories available as different colors or different lines. There will be a time axis and change, change one change is observed in those categories over the time. In that case, the change of one category can be facilitated as compared to the other one with the help of line chart. And other things, if we have too many categories to compare over the time, we can use line chart. This visualization becomes very clumsy in this situation, but still it is very useful. We want to compare just two categories. We simply hold control key, click on those specific categories, and those two categories will be highlighted, and other things will be uh, faded away. Basically, it is facilitating comparison of trends. Okay. In line chart, we discussed about line chart can be used for showing trends. And in most cases, trends over the time. For comparison of few categories as uh, trends over the time or too many categories, just a comparison between those categories itself. Also, we can use line to show a distribution of data. Okay. As a histogram. So what exactly histogram is? Histogram is basically a, a visualization similar to this. Okay where we take a value which is numerical in nature and we try to plot the frequencies means number of occurrences of that particular value among the data set on y-axis in the overall picture coming in front of us show that how frequent that particular data in our data set is and in general we find a point where we there is a peak okay and that peak shows us, in general, if a new data value comes into the data set, how, where exactly it is most likely to fall, okay? It is very uh, specifically general behavior of data, okay? For example, if we are taking this particular example where we are dropping profits on x axis and taking count of those values on y axis we have roughly 1835 values out of 10000 means roughly 2 out of 10 okay means 20% of the values focused into the profit range zero to twenty dollars itself so it does says to us that in general when we make any sale we are expecting a profit associated with that between zero dollars to twenty dollars 
that's a very general behavior of the data and the representation of a value on x axis and the repetitions over the y axis is called histogram it helps to understand the behavior of data line charts are used as <clears throat> histograms when number of values are too high on an axis okay we can use same thing on bar chart okay usually for histograms we use bar chart only in general but in certain cases where number of values is too high and number of bins is too high in that case line chart can be used interchangeably okay and with that we come to one simple conclusion that simple conclusion the line chart is all about finding patterns in the data bar chart bar chart are simple visualizations to compare aggregate measures over time or among the items okay they are also used for examining data distributions which are categorical or continuous in the nature they are used for comparing the compositions as stack bar chart or they they provide summary statistics as well as of the categorical value so bar charts are the primary utility for performing volumetric comparisons so concept of the bar chart is very simple we take a value generally a categorical value on x axis and we try to plot a volumetric measure on y axis okay for trend of time we take the volume on y axis and time on the x axis and it will be plotted like this it will show the pattern over time you can see that it is very similar to the bar chart itself okay and if we do a little bit tweaking of the uh, uh, the appearance let's say i'm just changing the bar width to perfectly overlap each other it will look like a bar chart itself and more specifically a area chart itself okay basically here also the comparison is happening the values at different time intervals okay second thing it can facilitate comparison of categories how the com categories are performing uh, as compared to each other that is called comparison of category similar to this one like we have take categorical data on x axis y axis will have the volumetric data over there okay then we can trace the composition of something like here you can see we are tracing out the whole profit within the categories and how those categories are made up of here you can see very clearly we are showing that the major segment of the technology pro uh, based profit are coming from the copiers and the phones category and the major losses from furniture category are coming from the tables category so it is showing the composition of the whole profit uh, within this particular category by showing it as a graphs okay by stacked bar graphs here the options you get is like you can show the labels mm -hmm. for all the values or the bar segments or the complete bars itself or you can show the complete bars as a number and a bar segment as a percentage out of this particular whole thing whole profit of roughly 1.45k 1.0 sorry 145k you are majorly uh, seeing the profits coming from the technology segment sub category copiers 38.2% of it so this is used for sh uh, sharing the composition of a particular commodity similarly you can use the 100% stack bar chart basically using the stack rather than stack you use 100% stack bar chart rather than respecting just the values the just the value means the overall sum it scales down all the things bit, uh, between a scale of 0 to 100 and then it shows so cases the proportion out of 100 that's also approach 
of sharing the competitions. And then if we, we are able to facilitate comparison over time, means we can compare more than one category across the time axis by side by side bars. And those volumes are at every single moment of time. They are compared among each other with over the over and over. Okay. That's called comparison over time. And other thing, comparison of many categories over time can be facilitated with a similar approach using the stack bar chart. So like we are showing the comparison within a specific uh, bar itself and those bars are plotted across the time. Okay. One more approach we see this basically the histograms are coming from means histograms are plotted in general as a bar chart itself. Okay. Where we use a value on X axis and a value on X axis and their frequencies on Y axis. Okay. So I'm just enabling the zoom slider category axis zoom slider to showcase the exact values, how exactly they are uh, repeating in the data set. And uh, we have a control on the bin category and see the focus where the data is focused come, uh, in general. Okay, this is another approach. This is suitable in case where are lesser number of categories and we want to show their frequencies, okay. This is an overview of where exactly the uh, bar charts are used. Idea is very simple. We put a volume on Y axis and on an X, X axis, we do take care of the respective categories. Okay. And the, the criteria for, for which we are going to compare. Okay. So this is about the bar chart. Coming to the next segment. Combination chart. Combination chart is basically a uh, simple combination of bar chart and line chart. Okay. It gives an option to display both bars and lines in a single visualization with an overlay effect. Lines are drawn on top of the bars and it facilitates comparison of heterogeneous quantity. For example, if you are comparing sales and the profit, you know that every single moment the profits will be on different scale and sales will be on different scale because profits will be percentage of the, sa the uh, sales price itself they are never going to exceed the sales amount itself it facilitates the comparison of the pattern directly rather than comparing the exact values like in proportion to this particular amount of sales how much profit we did okay so combination charts are basically facilitate the comparison of patterns of heterogeneous measures. We don't want to confuse our end users that we are uh, we are sales and the profit are same thing. In that case, one measure can be shown as a bar, another one as a line. Okay, and as the property from the property perspective, the combination chart and the Combination chart is basically a union of line chart and bar chart directly. Okay. They are very useful in situations where we have to compare two quantities which are different in nature, but they are compared across the same criteria. For example, time like order date or sales uh, uh, shipping date or a simpler criteria on the x-axis, but the y-axis will be di uh, differing significantly. In those cases, combination charts are used. Okay. Here, one thing to notice here, we have a specific use case of uh, uh, combination chart that is called Pareto chart. So I will not go too deep on what is Pareto rule, but I will give a simple glimpse of it. It is given by... Uh, Wilfred Pareto, when he recorded this particular phenomenon in late 1800s, okay, and then a statistician named Joseph Juran given a, a rule or publicized a concept as a Pareto chart. When it says that it says that 80% of the consequences come from the 20% of the causes, 
and there is unequal relationship between inputs and output. For example, in a team of a football, there may be many players, but the people who are scoring most of the goals will be few. Okay, it is also called the law of vital few. It means only a few people can uh, will be able to contribute to the most of the profits. In general, there is a called something called square root uh, principle. Okay. So a square root principle is some similar to this one itself, but it is different from Pareto rule. That says that the most of the profits or the work comes from the square root uh, uh, root of the people. It means if there are 10 people in the organization, so the most of the work will be coming from just three of them. 7% will be simply sitting idle. So it's a similar to that particular uh, rule itself, but Pareto rules states like there is unequal relationship between consequences and the causes. 20% causes are responsible for the 80% of the consequences, okay? Maybe a shopkeeper is having 100 commodities over there, but he is making 50% of the profit from the 20% of the uh, sale of 20% sale of, of the commodity itself. The Pareto chart is ideally used when we have to communicate important issues and we have to prioritize the task. In simple words, we can use the Pareto chart to split the data set into two halves of uh, effect by splitting the causes into 80-20. And we can identify the area where we can maximize our profit or the area where we can minimize our losses. Okay. So <clears throat> just moving to the next segment. The next segment is about data distributions, okay? Data distributions basically means showing all the possible values or intervals of the data. And also looking at the data scattering, how the data is scattered in general, in a X, Y plane, okay? That's called the data distribution. Data distribution generally talks about where data is generally placed in context of two variables, okay? This is also called bivariate analysis because we are going to use two different variables, going to compare the effect of those variables on each other and where the data points will be placed. For example, the sales and the profit are going to be related with each other, but how they are related exactly, that can be observed by visualizing as a data distribution. For showing data distributions, we use scatter plot and scatter plots plots the data point on horizontal and a vertical axis as a raw data itself like exact points one point will be representing the raw value of the x variable and the y variable a scatter plot is an attempt to plot data points on a horizontal and a vertical axis okay it attempt to show how much one variable is affected by another okay in simpler words, it is also called correlation, how the two variables are related with each other. Here, each row in the data table is represented by a marker. Marker means a point which represents the value corresponding to x and y axis. And the position of the marker depends on the column set on x and y axis. That simple is a scatter plot. Why it is used? It is used to find the relationship among those variables showing the data distribution, discover clustering, and identifying the outliers, okay? Okay, in this particular case, we know there is a positive relationship between X and Y values, X sales and the profit value, but we are having data points in forward direction and backward direction as well, okay? To find out the data distribution, we have used scatter plot by placing the data itself. We found how the data is distributed. It is uh, not very even, but there is uh, that is not very much rare as it means it's dense at one place and rare at the extreme values. Okay, now we are going to ex include one simple thing that's is yes, by lines and curves. I'm using a straight line fit one per trellis panel. Okay, what it does, it includes. A straight line fit between x and y axis, which represent relationship between the sales and profit. 
y is the profit value value means it's our end result x is our uh, x axis that is sales value means we are studying the effect of sales on profit so we will get a simple equation of the line with representing a slope if simply a line is skewed upwards means it is um, sloped upward it means that there is a positive relationship between both the values with increase of sales the profit is increasing if the line is sloping downwards it means that there is a negative relationship with the increase of sales the profit is uh, decreasing if there is no slope at all means it's a perfectly straight line at zero itself okay that is called no relationship at all it means that regardless of the change of the x value y value is completely unaffected okay that's called the finding the relationship or the correlation over there okay now we have certain things which is called outliers which outliers are the extreme values which are too different from the regular data set our regular data set is basically focused on this area itself rarely we are reaching beyond this so we can say that these values are outliers the value from here to here can be considered mild outliers because it is slightly slipping out of the regular data set but these two values are definitely an extreme outliers means that they are they should not be considered our country on in our calculation and see what effect does it have on correlation i simply mark these two values okay and i simply do filter out okay our calculation are ha have slightly changed and correlation have been improved slightly okay that's the way how we uh, use the concept of outliers into the correlations while calculating correlations we should take care of the extreme outliers as well other thing like let me exclude this one as well considering it as outlier back rows filter out it is slowly changing and also what happens let's say i'm going to the color axis okay and change the color more to the category color okay you see that there are multiple colors available different kind of categories are available and they have kind of different relationship uh, within those subcategories between profit and sales how to identify that we can use the same straight line but rather than splitting by uh, trellis panel split by colors we will find out the separate correlation between the uh, sales and profit for separate categories okay and we can see for the category furniture the uh, slope is very negligible means very weak the co correlation is found between both the variables is regardless of how much sales we do into the furniture category we are not making too much great profit over there okay so probably we should discontinue using that and selling that one and for office supplies and technologies we have pretty much good uh, correlation and basically office supplies we are doing very great okay the correlation is very tight so we should focus on increasing sales over there another observation we can find out the effect of different variables in on the furniture category we are currently focusing on the customer segment consumer let's focus on home office segment here also the effect of effect of sales on profit for the furniture category is not too great but if we take the corporate segment we see that furniture are doing comparatively better as compared to the previous stages and if we go to the specifically consumer segment we have completely dead relationship between uh, sales and profit it simply means that with the help of data we can conclude that if we are going to sell furniture we should focus on basically the corporate segment rather than just the uh, all of them okay that's how the correlation helps us to reach out to an ATC cell other thing it helps to discover clustering and identify outliers identify outliers i have already shown by the, basically identifying the odd values out okay that are extreme in nature other thing discovering clustering okay just see an example okay
Okay. Uh, what exactly I was uh, discussing? Okay, I am going to minimize this particular restore down this particular block and see a different kind of data set. So this particular data set is of the mall customers. The mall customers basically we are trying to plot the annual income of the customers visiting. Okay, in a mall and their spending score between one to hundred means if they are spending less, their spending score will be close to one. If they're spending more, their spending score will be higher over there. So how we use scatter plot for clustering, we plot data similar to the other ways, uh, other uh, approaches, just data, we are seeing data, data distribution here. And we observe here, there are groups of data formed. One here, one here, another one here, here, and here. We got five different clusters of data. And they are signif signifying different kind of behavior of data into the different segment. It is splitting the customers into the different segments. For example, these people have low annual income and low spending score. So maybe we have to, we need to study them separately and outcomes may be similar to this particular uh, statement. May, I may fi fi frame a hypothesis on based on this particular data. As these people have lesser amount of money with them, they're spending less. If we want them to spend a little bit more, either we have to increase their annual income, that's not in our hand, or we need to make the cheaper product available for them. Okay? So that may be an hypothesis with this, this particular thing. And with this statement itself, we need to test hypothesis and uh, plan our business strategy to maximize our sales so that these people will move to this particular bucket, the higher bucket. Okay. This particular bucket is having lesser income but higher spending score. Maybe they are visiting the uh, mall le less frequently, but they are focusing on bulk orders. For example, people know that. Uh, in DMART, if we will purchase something, we will get heavy discount, but there is a cost associated in uh, visiting that mall. And if you uh, buy the products in the lesser quantity, you will not, not get that particular margin. So maybe if we facilitate rather than 5 kg of wheat packet or rice packet, we start facilitating 15 kg of uh, packets which have higher discount, then these people will buy a little bit more because they're getting good discount on top of that particular commodity. Maybe they are not needing that thing immediately, but as the discounts are higher, they are, uh, they are able to uh, perform bulk purchases. That's maybe the other business strategy over here. If we focus on other sets, there are two kinds of people in higher income group that is having a lesser spending score and another one with the higher spending score. And both are having higher in annual income. So what may be the reason that these people are in the lesser spending score, not in this one. If you uh, observe closely, probably we, we will be able to find that why these people are standing less because the commodities they are looking for are not available in your store. For example, these people may be interested in the Rado or Armani exchange uh, watches which are not in the stock because your your store is focused on this other general segment over here that's why these people's interest are not fulfilled that's why they are not making purchases over there these people are having money but they are not spending because the commodities of their interest are not available okay so probably we should have a separate section which uh, include luxury watches or luxury items of the interest of the other people or maybe these are in, these people are interested in specific brand which are not available in your store you should be uh, focusing on bringing that uh, that value so that these people move to this other bucket over here okay that's the approach of finding the clusters using scatter okay now there is another segment which is pie chart it's very simple we are going to uh, show a proportion of whole as a pie angles or the pie sectors where the colors will be assigned to the categories and the sizes will be uh, showing the value. It shows the total contribution towards the whole for uh, as a pie chart. 
pie chart are the visualizations which are highly discouraged in case there are more categories or lesser uh, variations over there. Why I say so? Pie charts are very bad at showing uh, the data clearly by angles. Reason is human brains are not good at interpreting angles that effectively. So if there are minor differences, they will be ignored. Other thing, if there are a lot number of categories, the pie charts become uh, too dense or too uh, cluttered to be read properly. That's the another problem. Third thing for a smaller sector size is we do not get proper place to place the labels and uh, tool tips or the values over there to show the distinctions. That's why they're highly discouraged. Whereas we use pie chart to show the clear dominance, like one versus all comparison, one is doing very good and others are suppressed. In those situations, pie charts are used. There is nothing much to study about this one. Only thing we should keep in mind, we should avoid pie charts as much possible, but in case there is a business need, or uh, there is a specific justification, we should be using pie chart to show dominance or comparison. If we have to use pie chart, we should be mindful to show the data categories are less in number. We are using clearly distinctive colors and label the values properly to move forward, okay? Next concept, which is very important, that is details visualizations and details demand. So these are two concepts in the spot fire, which have a uh, very high significance. Details visualization is something when we click on or mark some values in a parent visualization, the inherited details should be presented as another visualization over here. And when we subsequently click on that one or mark some data into the detailed visualization, the further details is shown in the other uh, visualization that will be details visualization of the parent group. There will be parent child relationship between master and the slave visualization. And the data set here will be uh, simply uh, reduced to the mark data into the parent. How to set up a details visualization? There are two approaches. Right click on visualization and create a details visualization and select the other visualization uh, directly as a bar chart and see they will, that will start populating and configure the visualization as a uh, uh, as usual visualization itself, okay? Other way is simply check what marking does this parent visualization have, okay? And go back to the details visualization and limit that details visualization by the same marking itself, okay? This way, this visualization will become the details visualization of the parent one, okay? And the approach of selecting data in the parent visualization, seeing, seeing the details into the details visualization, separate visualization, then clicking on the separate visualization and third visualization gets populated. This particular approach is called drill down. We are moving from top to bottom approach, okay? Whereas there is another concept which is called uh, uh, details on demand. Details on demand is basically you go to the proper views and then enable the details on demand. It will show the data selected into the current visualization as a table. And it will change based on the selections made into the current visualization. The key words here are, are it will show the detail as a table. And second thing, it will show the details of currently active visualization and marking only. That's the difference between details visualization and details on demand. There is another approach I have de demonstrated. This is what this was the uh, drill down. Basically, you select something in parent visualization and the daughter visualization or child visualization will get populated. Then you mark something in child visualization and grandchild element will be populated. This is called drill down. Another concept is called drill through. Drill through means you go ahead and select a marking and use the same marking as a uh, limiting uh, marking over there. Also, you select uh, this particular property in the end, like if no items are marked in the master visualization, show all data. So whenever you will click on something, okay, 
it will show the details into the same visualizer as the same uh, visual uh, as a same chart but for the limited set and as soon as you will progress to the final granularity the same visualization will get adjusted to the final granularity over there of the data okay and if you un uh, unmark every single thing in that particular visualization that will be reset to the original state okay that's the concept of drill through drill down will have parent child relationship means you select something on top and the bottom will adjust this is called drill down drill through is you select something the same visualization adjust to so the related uh, data only this is called drill through this is a these are the two core approaches into visualization of details visualization details on demand and using details visualization we can do this kind of approach one thing to uh, notice here is like when we are talking about details on uh, demand we are talking about a panel details in a, or details visualization is a clear visualization as a separate it will occupy the physical space there are clearly benefits of using details on demands and detail uh, and the details visualization details visualization will always take some space but and if it is closed it is closed you need to recreate it but details on demand panel will be collapsed or visible based on your selection and it can be bought again or collapsed completely okay both of them are important here the key term will be focusing on the marking what we are going to use if you use something for uh, marking by marking to limit down it will be uh, which is used as for uh, primary marking for the visualization the visualization will be become drill through and for drill down we used to uh, we have to use the marking of the parent visualization visualization as limiting mark uh, limiting mark uh, mark into the child visualization that's the key idea of drill down and drill through. 